So guys, there is hope for the IPOB community as Donald Trump appoints Susie Wise as his chief of staff. This is a woman whose firm has once rendered services to the IPOB community. Also, Ohanes Ndibo has told the Igbo leaders to take advantage of Donald Trump's presidency in securing Namdekanu's release. And guess what? A chieftain of the APC in Enugu state has called on Tinubu to release Namdekanu the way he released the Northern Teens. We all know the Northerners, you know, the Northern young guys who were arrested and were equally released. So guys, this and more we are going to be seeing in this video. Take a look. Donald Trump's new chief of staff, Susie Wiles, has an, an interesting and unexpected connection to a Nigerian separatist movement. Recently appointed to Trump's team, Wiles has been an influential figure in Trump's political career, credited with helping secure his wins in both 2016 and 2020. Her new role as chief of staff is historic as she becomes the first woman to hold this position. In a statement, Trump praised Wiles as tough, smart, innovative, and universally respected. But Wiles' career has extended well beyond U.S. political campaigns. In 2019, she co-chaired the influential lobbying firm Mercury Public Affairs, which was hired by the Indigenous People of Biafra, or IPOB. IPOB is a movement that advocates for the independence of Biafra, a, a region in eastern Nigeria predominantly home to the Igbo ethnic group. IPOB's mission is to draw attention to the challenges facing Biafran supporters and to promote their human rights and democratic aspirations on the global stage. Records indicate that IPOB's engagement with Mercury Public Affairs came with a significant price tag, $85,000 per month, to lobby U.S. lawmakers and the State Department for Biafra's cause. According to the Department of Justice, Mercury reported $254,000 in payments for their IPOB work in 2021 alone. These records highlight IPOB's dedication to gaining U.S. support, viewing America as a potential ally um, in their struggle for autonomy. As Trump's victory was announced in the recent 2024 presidential election, Biafran supporters felt a renewed sense of hope. Across social media and in Biafran advocacy groups, Trump's win was seen as a beacon of inspiration. Many believe that his administration might provide momentum for their cause, particularly as Trump has previously shown support for other independence movements like Brexit. One prominent voice in the movement, Simon Ekba, a self-proclaimed prime minister of Biafra, congratulated Trump and expressed hopes for the U.S. to support self-determination and the freedom of people to choose their own government. Other supporters echoed similar sentiments, hopeful that U.S. leadership might finally lend its influence to their ongoing efforts. This unique connection between Wiles and IPOB illustrates the far-reaching influence of her lobbying career. Through her firm, she's engaged with a variety of organizations and causes, positioning herself as a key figure in high-stakes political advocacy, both within and beyond U.S. borders. So, guys, there is hope for the IPOB community after Donald Trump announced that Susie Wise is going to be his chief of staff. This is a woman whose firm, I mean her lobby firm, has once rendered service to the IPOB community. So, she's going to serve under Donald Trump, and it is being believe that with her presence in the Donald Trump's administration, she will help in tabling the, the agitation and the detention of Namdi Kano to Donald Trump. Donald Trump, during his last election campaign, praised Nigerians. That was when some of the Southeasterners took to the streets to support Donald Trump's presidency and guess what donald trump took notes of that and also with this woman who is going to serve on that donald trump who also understands the agitation going on it is being believed that it will be easy for namdi carlos release to be secured so guys Talking about agitation in Nigeria, we know that during the last presidential election, almost all the presidential candidates said they were going to negotiate with agitators. I mean, Peter Obi was the first person who made that statement. And guess what? Other presidential candidates followed suit. But as it stands now that Tinubu is the president of Nigeria, he has not come up with that topic, especially in the area of releasing Namdi Kano. This is somebody whom the court has set free. This is somebody whom the judge once said go settle out of court but, but Tinubu is not bringing up his matter to the table and one keeps wondering what might be the reason 
anyway, the reason might not be far-fetched. For me, I feel Tinubu is afraid of the backlash that is going to come from the north. We all know that Tinubu is still eyeing 2027 and he feels that if he releases Namdikalo, that might cost him, you know, the support that he's going to get from the north. And that is why he's being careful, you know, he's not even talking about, as in, since he came into office, I don't think he has mentioned any, as in any method he's going to use in discussing or resolving this issue of Namdikano. But we know what happened to the Fulani leader who was uh, arrested and detained for, you know, putting up his own military. He said he wanted to have his own military to secure his own people. This is a group that has come out openly, publicly, to take responsibility for buying the lives of people, you know, and when their leader was arrested for setting up his own army, guess what? There was pressure from the north and Tinubu had to yield. Tinubu released him. Apart from that, Tinubu has also brought into existence the Ministry for Life livestock this is just to make the north happy and one keeps wondering why we are living in a country where justice is not being served to everybody so the court has set this guy free and you are still keeping him back and there are no 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 moves as in to bring up his matter at least to ensure that the south is enjoying some little peace we all know what has been going on so when this news broke that donald trump is going to use uh susie wise people believe that she's that she's going to play a role in talking to trump you know to bring up nandi Kano's matter and for the ipob community it is really a welcome development and like you can see from this post that donald trump how donald trump's new chief of staff susie wise worked for ipob movement in 2029 through her lobbying firm she has once granted service to the ipob community and she understands what this fight is all about and it is being perceived at the moment that she might also want to help to secure the release of Nandi Kano. So guys, this is really a welcome development, looking at how things are going. Also, an APC chieftain in Enugu State has called on Tinubu to release Namdi Kano the way he released the Northern Things. You know, when it has to do with the North, the, 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 the federal government sweeps sweep into action. But when it has to do with the Southeast, it is being handled with laxity. So you can now measure, you know, and balance for yourself when it comes to the way justice is being served in this country. It is not being served fairly. And that is why people are saying that, honestly, this country, it is difficult for this country to unite you know there have been this call that call for secession and all that also the call for nigerian president bola tinubu to free namdi kanu the leader of the indigenous people of biafra after president tinubu's recent decision to release minors detained for protesting some nigerians are asking why not kanu join us as we explore the arguments and what this could mean for nigeria's justice system Title screen, Justice or Double Standard, the call to free Namdi Kanu. Recently, President Bola Tinubu made headlines by ordering the release of several minors detained for protesting against what they called bad governance. While some praise this decision as compassionate, others are now calling it selective justice. Prominent voices, including Dr. Ben Noye, a former chairman of the All Progressives Congress in Anugu State, are asking the president to extend this same clemency to Namdi Kanu. Dr. Noye argues that if President Tanubu has the power to release these minors, then he should also free Kanu, who has been detained since 2021 on charges of terrorism related to his call for an independent Biafra. Noye stated that releasing Kanu would make the justice system in Nigeria appear less selective and biased. Uh, the underlying question here is one of fairness. Why was Tanubu willing to release minors from the north, but remain silent on the issue of Namdi Kanu and other Biafran agitators? Human rights lawyer Nadume Afrikansi also weighed in, saying that Tanubu's intervention in these minors' cases was an overreach and questioning why Biafran activists, including minors, remain imprisoned. Afor Kansi argues that dispensing justice unequally creates a sense of segregation within the country, making one group feel marginalized. Now, to understand the full context, let's look back at why Namdi Kanu is in prison. Kanu, the leader of IPOB, the indigenous people of Biafra, has been advocating for the secession of Biafra from Nigeria. In 2021, he was detained and charged with terrorism after being transferred from Kenya. 
The federal government under former President Muhammadu Buhari refused to release him even after an appeal court discharged him, choosing instead to seek a higher court's ruling. For many, Kanu's continued detention feels like a political move rather than a strictly judicial one, especially given that the appeal court previously discharged him. Yet he remains in detention, and this inconsistency is what critics are now highlighting in Tinubu's recent decisions. Critics say that if Tinubu has become the supreme judge of Nigeria, as Afrokansi put it, then he should make fair judgments across the board. Uh, releasing the northern miners but not Biafran agitators signals a double standard, critics argue. On one hand, Tinubu responded to northern concerns by releasing miners detained after a protest. But on the other hand, Kanu, who represents significant issues for southeastern Nigeria, remains behind bars. Now let's ask you, our audience, should President Tinubu use his executive power to free Namdi Kanu, or is it a matter best left to the judiciary? Do you think releasing Kanu would heal divisions, or might it spark new ones? This is an issue that strikes at the heart of Nigeria's legal and political landscape. It's about justice, unity, and the power of the presidency. President Tinubu's decision could redefine perceptions of fairness and equality in Nigeria's justice system. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated on more stories that shape Nigeria and the world. And remember, your voice matters. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Should Tinubu free Namdi Kanu? Ohaneze Ndibo has called on the Igbo leaders to take advantage of Trump emerging as the uh, U.S. president in negotiating for Namdi Kanu's, you know, release. We all know that Donald Trump is somebody who believes that Africans should be independent and there should not be any dictatorship or authoritarian kind of rule, as in democracy should prevail. That is just Donald Trump for you. And it is being believed that, you know, secession is not even against the constitution of Nigeria. So if Nigeria Nigeria believes in secession. That means Namdi Kanu has the right to agitate all the Biafrans, all the Igbos have the right to agitate for them to go on their own. And I think with the kind of ideology that Trump has, he will want to put mouth, like people will say, into this Namdi Kanu's matter so that he can be released and also for the Southeast to know some level of peace. Southeast leaders have been urged to reach out to U.S. President-elect Donald Trump calling for his intervention in the ongoing detention of Namdi Kanu, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, or IPOB. This call was made by Okachuku Isiguzoro, a prominent member of the Igbo socio-cultural organization Ohanaezi and Digbo. According to Isiguzoro, Trump's influence could be a powerful asset in efforts to secure Kanu's release. Isiguzoro's statement outlined a detailed, multi with Kanu, who had been a vocal supporter of Trump, could be strategically leveraged in this effort. Trump's intervention, according to Isi Guzoro, could encourage both British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Nigerian President Bola Tinubu to take a closer look at Kanu's case. For many in the Southeast, Kanu is more than a political leader. He's seen as a symbol of resistance each Nigeria's traditional rulers, specifically mentioning the Oba of Lagos and the Sultan of Sokoto. These respected leaders hold significant cultural and social influence, making them ideal mediators in the discussion of Kanu's release. By acting as mediators, their support could help facilitate peaceful and productive dialogues between Nigerian authorities and Southeast leaders. Isiguzoro sees the engagement of these leaders as a way to create a bridge for understanding and to address the issue with the cultural respect it deserves. Inside international judicial channels, Isiguzoro called for a ceasefire among pro biafra groups and other agitators across the Southeast. This temporary cessation of hostilities, he explained, is, is essential to foster a peaceful environment that would be more conducive to meaningful negotiation. According to Isiguzoro, a calmer landscape could strengthen the case for Kanu's release by showing a united and disciplined front among his supporters. 
He stressed that sustained agitation without a peaceful strategy could jeopardize any chance for diplomacy and compromise. By calling for peace, Isiguzoro believes that Southeast leaders can gain more ground in advocating for their cause. But Isiguzoro didn't hold back his criticisms of Southeast leaders who, in his view, have not done enough for Kanu and his supporters. He argued that some Southeast governors have failed to take meaningful action, showing a disregard for Kanu's plight and the larger cause of Igbo rights. This lack of visible commitment, he suggested, risks losing the trust and faith of those who look to these leaders for support and representation. Isiguzoro's critique extended to certain Igbo traditional rulers and religious figures who had once shown support for Kanu in public court sessions. He questioned their commitment, hinting that their actions may have been more performative than genuine. He urged these leaders to take concrete steps rather than offer symbolic gestures, which he claimed do not reflect true allegiance to the cause. For Isiguzoro, the road to Kanu's freedom is about more than just Kanu himself. It represents the right of the Igbo people to advocate for justice and equality within Nigeria. Through a strategic blend of international influence, traditional leadership engagement, and local ceasefire efforts, he believes the Southeast can make a compelling case for Kanu's release and for the broader political objectives of the Igbo people. And that is why people are saying that it is really a welcome, you know, development that Susie Wiles is going to be Donald Trump chief of staff. So, guys, I just believe that this is going to go the way it is being perceived by the Southeasterners because it is high time, you know, Tinubu things of releasing Namdi Kanu, even if it means, you know, negotiating and giving him conditions. Some people have even come forward and say, release him to me, release him to me, as in if anything happens, hold me responsible. You can imagine to that point. But the Tinubu's government does not care, and that is why they are just doing things the way they are doing. So, guys, guys there is hope for the IPOB community after Donald Trump announced that Susie Wise is going to be his chief of staff. This is a woman whose lobby firm has once rendered some services to the IPOB community. And it is now being perceived that with her serving under the leadership of Trump, you know, bringing up the topic of Nam De Carlo release is going to be easy. So, guys, we all know that during the presidential election, almost all the presidential candidates, especially the forerunners in the person of Peter Obi, Atiku, and Tinubu, they said they were all going to negotiate with agitators. Peter Obi was the first person who said that. And guess what? All that presidential candidates, you know, followed suit. But since Tinubu assumed office, he has not brought up the topic of Namdi Khan. And that brings you to, you know, understanding why the Igbos are feeling marginalized in this country. Guess what? We know about the Fulani leader who was arrested for setting up his own tax force, you call it his own military men, you call it his own police, whatever term you want to use to describe it. He set up a security outfit, you know, to secure him and maybe his Fulani community. So he was arrested that that is against the Nigerian constitution and was detained. But guess what? The pressure from the north came heavily and Tinubu had to bow to that pressure and released him. This is somebody who has on several occasions came out to announce that, yes, Yes, they are taking responsibility for the buying of some people because their cows were tampered with. We all know all those stories. These are people that have messed up with people's lives. But guess what? When he was even arrested, Tinubu had to bow to pressure to release him. And people keep wondering, why releasing him and holding back Nambi Khan? Apart from that, Tinubu also set up the Ministry of Livestock. This is just to make the North happy. But still, the North is still feeling marginalized under the Tinubu's government. They've come out to say they are being marginalized, that Tinubu has flooded, you know, so many key positions with the people from the South, uh, West, and all that. And... Guess what? Tinubu is not even thinking of bringing Namdi Carlos' topic to the table because he feels 
uh, he might get some backlash from the north and he fears that because he feels if the north does not support him in 2027 what is he going to do so because of that Tinubu is being careful not to bring forth not to bring forward the topic of Namdi Carlos release we all know that the court has set him free why is he still being kept in detention apart from that the judge once announced that Namdi Carlos should go settle out of court but what what is the federal government waiting for why are they not bringing forth namdi carlos release topic to the table you know because he's from the south west if namdi carlos was to be in the north or was to be from the north you know what would have happened we've seen boko haram fighters who were arrested who have ended up and you know destroying lives i mean they've fight so many people but when these people were arrested they were given you know a very good welcome you know they they told us that they are they are they are de-radicalizing them they are retraining them so that they will come back to the they release them back to the society we were even told that some of them were taken in to become a part and parcel of the military and all that they were given packages to go start life you can imagine people who have carried gone and they've been able to buy people you know being given such amnesty nigerians this is the kind of country we are living in and that is why people are calling for namdi carlos release and you keep wondering tinubu is not paying attention to that because he feels the north might not be happy and the north might you know it might backlash you know and if the north should not support him you know he didn't win lagos he didn't win lagos and if the north should abandon him it means that possibly his future career might be jeopardized so guys this is one of the reason what i what i i think is what is really delaying the topic of namdi kanu's release being brought to the table but as it stands now people are feeling that with donald trump you know being elected as the president of nigeria of the united states that he want to talk about you know nigeria and how democracy is you know being experienced in nigeria and also namdi kanu being detained and we are just hoping that with Nam, uh, with donald trump being the president of uh, of the united states is going to help in hastening the release of nam the Kano. they not despite all that tinubu is thinking he's doing for them they are still feeling marginalized they feel that tinubu has flooded everywhere especially key positions with the people from the southwest and they are also agitating at this moment there is a cold war going between them between the tinubu's camp and the northern camp they are not happy with the management you know that